With a franchise that set an industry-wide standard for having a captivating story along with excellent third-person gameplay, there's bound to be some interesting nuggets of information here. So like usual, we're here to give them to you. Here we are with 10 facts about the Uncharted series that you may not have known. Starting off with number 10, look, developing a video game is no easy task. It takes a lot of money, boatloads of people, and thousands upon thousands of hours to work to produce even a playable demo, let alone a game series that gets bigger with every entry. The Uncharted series is definitely no different in this regard. In 2011, during the late development of the third Uncharted game, Drake's Deception, the developer Naughty Dog's co-president Christoph Balestra tweeted out a photo of how much space all of Uncharted 3's assets, which are, for those of you that don't know, essentially the stuff that goes into a game like 3D models, sound effects and textures it took up a 25 terabyte hard drive and it took up almost the entire thing leaving around 700 gigs left 25 terabytes is a lot of storage hell a few years ago you were the coolest kid in school if you had a 32 gig ipod touch and most consoles nowadays ship with one terabyte of storage so it's no surprise that at the game's release developers had to really work some compression magic to fit the entire game on a 50 gigabyte blu-ray disc it just never really ceases to amaze me how much this stuff is done now next at number nine if if you're working on creating a video game or any piece of media, there's a lot to be said about the importance of sketching out your ideas before you execute them. Whether that be like a story treatment or even some concept art, this process is usually essential for getting the entire team on the same mental wavelength. But honestly, there's just a lot of hurdles to jump through if you want to create some good looking 3D concepts for cheap. Products like AutoCAD and 3DS Max can run you thousands of dollars just to get creating concept art. So when Rob Rupal, art director at Naughty Dog for the second Uncharted game Among Thieves in 2009 said he used a free and open software for 3D sketching and that surprised people. Yeah, that's right. A developer creating one of the biggest, most popular expensive games at a time used SketchUp. This is a Google owned tool that prides itself on being free and for everyone to use. Rupal said that the tool allowed him to create beautiful concept art in record time and that he heavily used it in creating the Shambhala area at the end of the game. So it turns out Uncharted is a really good example of why tools like these should be open source and available to everyone. At number eight, come on, let's face it, Nathan Drake is cool as hell. He's a charismatic, rebellious, adventure-loving, and treasure-hunting badass, and his personality really shines through his moments of relatable quips and overall good guy demeanor. When Naughty Dog was beginning to flesh out exactly who the protagonist would be of the first Uncharted game, they looked at some real life examples. During a presentation of the first game in 2008, Naughty Dog game designer Richard Lemonchand admitted that the designers originally based Nathan Drake on Johnny Knoxville from Jackass. Knoxville's very cynical but overall nice guy attitude guided designers when they focused on creating Nathan Drake. Now Nathan Drake doesn't do half of the stupid stuff that Johnny Knoxville does, but uh, he does fall down a lot. Not only that, Knoxville wasn't the only inspiration for Nate, as series writer Amy Hennig said that she looked to the grit of Harrison Ford as some inspiration for the character. Even further than that, as a little evidence, in Uncharted 4, it's rumored that the sound the grappling hook makes is a slight homage to the sound Indiana Jones's whip makes. I don't know about you all, but I'm starting to see a little bit of a trend here. Going down recent memory lane with number seven, if you're an Uncharted fan, you probably watched the E3 reveal and demos of the game's releases. And if you've done that, you probably know of a little mistake that happened at E3 in 2015 during the demo for the fourth and final Uncharted game, A Thief's End. During the demo on the big live stage, one of the controllers malfunctioned while everyone was watching. Nathan Drake just stood there for 30 awkward seconds while Naughty Dog scrambled around behind the scenes to figure out why the game wasn't working. Turns out both controllers on stage were just connected to another backup PlayStation 4 instead. So a little Easter egg in Uncharted 4 comes in the form of a PSN trophy called Stage Fright that, yep, you guessed it, pokes a little fun at the E3 faux pas. To get that trophy, players need to keep Nate standing still at the exact point in the final game that appeared in the demo. Just 30 seconds of standing still and that bronze trophy is yours. So you gotta give Naughty Dog some credit for making fun of themselves here, I always appreciate that. Moving on to number six, what do Nathan Drake and Harrison Ford actually have in common? Other than the previously discussed fact that Ford was an inspiration for Nate's character, the situation gets a little more meta when you learn that Sony actually used Harrison Ford in advertisements that promoted Drake's deception. Now you may be wondering, dude, why didn't I see any of these? Well, that's because they were only broadcast in Japan. This TV spots were really simple enough, a casual Ford looking intently into his TV as he's playing Drake's deception, all while whispering commands like jump into the DualShock controller. I guess this confirms our suspicions. Indiana Jones is a true gamer, I guess. I wonder if he likes Mountain Dew. 
Next up at number five, not only did Naughty Dog release the Uncharted series, but obviously they're responsible for everybody's Wumpa Fruit loving Bandicoot, Crash. Now there's actually a wild theory out there that Crash Bandicoot and Uncharted essentially take place in the same universe or some sort of meta version. This theory has actually been going for a while. You probably know about the big one in Uncharted 4, but the franchise has had small Easter eggs referencing one another throughout the games. In the first Crash Bandicoot game, the titular character is seen to have a framed photo of Nate on his mantelpiece. This is of course in the remastered and same trilogy version, but still. Then of course we do have Nathan Drake's gun holster, which does have Naughty Dog on the back of it. And then of course there is the big famous scene in Uncharted 4 where you literally sit down on the couch with Elena and play Crash Bandicoot on an original PlayStation. I don't know if these actually do take place in the same universe, but I think it's safe to say that in whatever universe Uncharted is in, they have video games and they have Crash Bandicoot. Really, next, I think we just need Nathan Drake as a playable character in Crash Bandicoot. We've seen the mirror opposite of that before with Nathan Drake in a Crash Bandicoot level, so I think it's safe to say that modders will come up with something good soon. Now at number four, just when I thought there wasn't any more room for crazy crossovers on this list, I was immediately proved wrong. This one is just a fun little fact and not so much of an Easter egg, but apparently there's some other cohabitation when we're talking about anthropomorphic video game animals and Nathan Drake. Turns out the lead game designer for a number of games within the Sonic the Hedgehog game series, Hirokazu Yasuhara, was also a game designer on the second and third Jack and Daxter games, along with being a designer on the OG Uncharted game. This guy seems to have his hands on a lot since he's peppered his resume with games such as Pac-Man and Mario. So we're just recognizing recognizing real talent here. Now next at number three, it's not easy to swing across massive caverns, take bullet fire from dozens of different enemies, and get out alive. Some might say that in order to survive something like that, it takes a little bit of luck. And apparently, according to lead game designers from Naughty Dog, Nathan Drake literally lives off of his luck. That's right, in July of 2018, animator Jonathan Cooper tweeted out a bombshell that instead of being a regenerative health system, it turns out that the red user interface that represents hits on Nate is actually just a luck meter. The redder the screen, the less lucky Nathan Drake is becoming and the luckier enemies get at getting a clear shot at him to take him out. The game and the screen getting more cluttered and red is literally Nathan Drake's luck running out. I love that. Coming down to number two, fans of the Uncharted series are all too familiar with the standalone expansion, Lost Legacy, which I personally really, really like. But this expansion was the first not to include the series' main protagonist, Nate, and instead focused on Chloe. But of course, this expansion left a lot of fans wondering, why did Naughty Dog go the route of exploring the story of Chloe, rather than one that focused on Sully and Sam, considering Uncharted 4 set that up so well? Well, excitingly enough, it turns out that Naughty Dog did consider a Sam and Sully story, but kept coming back to the idea of Chloe. In an interview with the Daily star in 2017, the game's creative director and writer Sean Eskiak and Naughty Dog's director of communications Arnie Meyer, the two explained why they chose to tell Chloe's story. They said and I quote, the Sam and Sully story grew quickly and grew very big quickly, but it just wasn't as compelling. Instead, the designers decided to go with something that felt a bit more fresh, to explore more deeply the character motivations of Chloe. But thankfully enough, don't fret, Naughty Dog said in the same interview that they weren't completely shutting out the possibility of a Sam and Sully expansion in the future. And honestly, I'm holding on to hope because that's a game I really wanna see. If we're not getting another Nathan Drake Uncharted, give me a Sully Uncharted. But finally, at number one, let's revisit the man himself, Nathan Drake, and some of the developer's design philosophy behind him. The Naughty Dog designers purposely designed Nathan Drake to look like a modern, everyday person, who I guess also happens to be really handsome and bulletproof, but that's besides the point. They kept his clothes really simple, having him wear a plain shirt and jeans as his outfit, specifically so they could put more focus on the head model and the facial features. To create more of a cinematic game while giving extra concentration on the performance of the motion capture actors, the designers utilized simple clothing design and body modeling, specifically in Uncharted 4, to make sure Nathan Drake had the vibe of a relatable, yet subtly badass adventure character. One of the biggest moments that they set up in Uncharted 4 was of course Nathan Drake working a regular normal job, and they had to sell that. That had to be convincing that this once awesome video game adventure badass could also be a regular person at a regular job. And thankfully, going back from their design from Uncharted 1, it seemed to have come full circle pretty well, wouldn't you agree? So those were 10 little interesting facts about the Uncharted series that we thought you guys would wanna know. Some of you out there might've known all of this, but some of you out there may have learned a few things, so we'd love to hear from you down in the comments. What's your favorite Uncharted game? And do you have any other little interesting factoids that we missed? Because we would love to hear from you guys. But if you enjoyed this video, clicking the like button does help us out. We really appreciate it. And if you are new, you should consider subscribing because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.